I've been going through something. 1,625 days. I've been going through something. Be afraid. Welcome back for episode 500 of the Ross Bolin Podcast. I am your host, Ross Bolin. And we really did it, folks. 500 episodes. That is so many episodes of me talking about some of the most important topics a human being can broach. And then also the most infantile and asinine bits and segments in the same place, in one show. I personally am extremely impressed. Like when we did episode one, I had no idea this show would one day pay my bills and give me the opportunity to start my own media company. Over the years, getting to know hundreds from the many thousands of you listening has been my pleasure. Engaging with many of you online has been my treat. And engaging with others of you online has been my absolute nightmare. I'm thankful for each and every one of you, though. I'm so thankful, so grateful for my career. I'm extremely passionate about what I do, and I wouldn't be able to do this without you and the people who have supported me over the years. There are a lot of you. You know who you are, particularly my parents and now wife, but a lot of other people did a lot of things for me to be able to start this path that I've been on for 11 years now. I've been doing content, and to sit here and talk into a microphone for a living, uh, thank you to all of you. I have learned things doing this show that maybe no man should know. Others, other things, I've learned that everyone should know. I have bared pieces of my soul, had my heart broken, both personally and professionally, decided to change my life, by getting off SSRIs, trying to take back my mental health, derailed into mania and suicidal ideations during the weaning off period, survived, got all the way off antidepressants, reclaimed my sanity to some degree, got married to someone who supports and loves every part of me, became a stepdad to a little girl I would die for. My life has changed so much since the start of this show that I really don't think most people would believe me if I laid it all out. And I can't anyway, we don't have time, so I won't today. Hell, when I first started this podcast, I believe I said that if we made it to 100 episodes, I would record episode 100 in a Polaris slingshot. It never happened. So I promised I would do it again. I said I'll do it for episode 200, then 300, then 400, and now, today, for episode 500, I am holding true to my oath, promises made, promises kept, but first, today's episode of RBP is brought to you by Bird Dogs. It is Chicken Leg Pride Month here on the Ross Boland Podcast in June. There's no better way to celebrate than by supporting the podcast and showing off your gams at the same time with some Bird Dog shorts. Bird Dogs have completely changed the game. Their shorts, pants, and joggers are made from the finest high-quality material and come with built-in liners that cradle your stovepipe for all-day comfort. Who the fuck likes being uncomfortable? It is hot as shit outside. And if you're wearing shorts that don't breathe, that don't support your nads with a pair of built-in underwear, that don't make you feel sexier than Pamela Anderson on Baywatch, then what the hell are you doing, friend? It's time to upgrade to the shorts and pants of the future. Your balls will thank you. And you obviously don't have to have chicken legs to enjoy bird dogs. They'll make your muscular thighs pop. So everyone knows you can lift heavy things. And because you listen to the Ross Boland podcast, Bird Dogs is throwing in free Bird Dogs dad hat with your order. If you go to birddogs.com, enter promo code ROSS at checkout. That's R-O-S-S, birddogs.com, B-I-R-D-D-O-G-S, promo code ROSS. Boom. Free Bird Dogs dad hat with your pair of Bird Dogs. You will not take these things off. I promise you they're phenomenal. Wear them constantly. So now... I am in the driver's seat of a Polaris, Polaris, Polaris slingshot that I paid over $300 to rent so we could record this episode together inside it. And when I say we, I mean me and the man sitting beside me in the passenger seat. Say something to the people. I'm back. 
It Micah. It always Micah. Hello, it me. It's still Micah. Hi. Wow. Uh, okay, look, let's just start by, by discussing the vehicle. You're, you're sitting inside of it. We're at, we're at Bowling Media headquarters here in the garage. Um, the semantics of recording while driving it around as there is no roof were legitimately impossible. Not going to work. So this is, work. this is the best we could do. And I would just add, we are sweating our titties and balls off out Yeah, here. we should also mention for those who listen to this podcast later, it is June 22nd. Yes. It's 101 degrees today, and uh, we're in Austin, Texas, recording the middle of the afternoon. It's, it's a miserable idea. Yeah, it's uh, but the I'm, worst possible time of day for us to have done this, but it's what made the most sense. I mean, we thought, what better way to go out than by sweating to death together on episode 500? It's like Thelma and Louise, yeah. sort of. Uh, what, what a treat. I, I'll, uh, before you get any further, I, I will say uh, thank you for having me. And uh, thank you for being here, man. It's a, it literally you know, the mentions never stop. I, I get tagged in RBP related things several times a week. About a year out from from our departure. Oh, it's, it's about a year out. Oh, 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 I realized. Okay. Yes. Oh, wow. This is the rest of my life. And, and I realized that because I was like, the show's never going to die. I'm going to do this forever. Um, and which means there will always be new listeners Going back to and episode one, the who then yeah. get to episode, what is it, 157, Damn. and then they go, wait, where the fuck is Micah? And then they message me, where the fuck is Micah? And that, that's going to happen until the day I die. Cool. It's, well, a, part, I, it's a part of my life. And right I now, I made peace I'm with it. I'm sitting in a Polaris slingshot in your driveway, or in your garage, and it's, this, is, this is not, I, you know, I've spent time over the years thinking about my return to the Ross Boland podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thinking it was inevitable at some point and here we are episode 500 a real treat to think that I, we would be doing it live from a polaris slingshot my favorite vehicle of all time because of its ridiculousness i've been long obsessed with this vehicle and i've never actually been inside of one and it is it's everything i want it to be and more it's as silly as i thought it would be micah it's it may, but no you just hit it on the head everything i thought it would be and more for example, you and I each have a cup holder here. There's yes. only two seats in this vehicle. But there is yet another additional cup holder. But it is unlike any cup holder I have ever seen. Looks like it, a dream catcher almost, or a basketball hoop. Yeah, like a basketball hoop of stretchy rubber. Um, it's bizarre. There is also, if you look behind you, Ross, uh -huh. there is a zipping compartment. Let's see. I would assume most people keep their drugs here. This would be a good place for drugs, alcohol, Let's, any number of illegal substances could be stored here. Oh, but in our or case, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer, which is currently inside the vehicle. Provided by the uh, kind company we rented the vehicle from. No one has used this in a very long time. It is quite dusty. Yeah, that hasn't been, that has never been touched um, until just now. There are LED lights, which I'll turn on. Let's I can't go. have them on the whole show. Very distracting. And it drains the battery, but. So you, as you can see, you've got the bright ones behind Micah and I. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, uh, you can get the full display there. We'll put up pictures and stuff on our social medias as well. You've got the lights behind you, but then on the front, there's another set of LED lights that I've activated that are actually color changing so that you can be as obnoxious as possible when you're out <laughs> cruising you, with three beverages solo dolo. You have to be a... We're now in a color changing click. Yes, we are. Um... This is the, the idea here for Micah and I is to maintain consciousness I, as long as possible, which is why I brought him this. I, I, I knew I Micah as a sweat boy, right? Yes. We Certified did a lot of episodes together. Knows this. And uh, I had to bring you a towel. I will note for the listenership when you and I first started, I was not a sweat boy. Uh, and I have aged enough since then. That's not how many episodes we've done that now I sweat my dick off just like everybody else. I come out here and I shoot hoops and I, and oh, I, yeah. I get a bath of my own sweat and then I go inside. Ashamed. Well, I'll also apologize to the people watching on YouTube. I am in the, the process of moving. We'll get into this later. But um, part of that is I don't know where my deodorant is. Oh, you, you, and you so, smell great to me because of my allergies. I can't smell anything. Perfect. Uh, and more importantly, my antiperspirant, which can sometimes limit the amount of sweat coming at least out of my armpits, sure. not everywhere else. But um, I've been without that now for... Uh, since Friday or Saturday. So it, things are worse. This is the worst possible outcome for me. 
uh, to be back on this program. I wonder if there's an amount you can sweat into that seat that ends with me getting some kind of charge. You know what I mean? I, if it's I, possible, you you're going to test I, it. I'm not going to make the the horny reference I would. This is not a Wash <laughs> Media podcast. You're, you have more dignity. You're right. Here than, at Bowling Media, we never say anything even remotely graphic. I keep it really clean here for the kids, Micah. You know how I am. I would never say something about people getting wet in a slingshot, so no, I'm not going to do that. never. Uh, I brought my Galoshans for this reason. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, that's for later. Let me ask you one other question. Yeah, yeah. Can you turn this on? I think if I did... Or do we have too much equipment on? We, I, it would somehow Before I leave, I want to hear what this sounds like. Oh, for like. sure. Maybe at the end, we'll try to turn it on and see okay. what happens. But yeah, there's a start-stop button here. And then there's a, a pretty standard steering wheel. It looks like a video game steering wheel, if we're yes. being real. Like something out of a Dave & Buster's ripped off and then put on the front here. Um, and then there's an R, an N, and a D. Reverse, neutral, and drive button. And that's it. And you have to be in neutral to put it in park, which requires you to yank up on the emergency parking brake. And then other than that, you've, you've got your drive and your reverse and, and some kind of LED screen here, which, which I'm assuming uh, turns on when you turn on the car. And, and yeah, that's, we're, we're in it, man. It's real. It's happening. We there are more it. zippers here as well. A lot of zipping compartments. A lot of, uh, oh, look at that. Hmm. How about that? Some, some documentation. Some flyers. From, yeah. Some flyers from the, uh, oh, the renter. And yeah. That's that. So anyway, we really did it. I'm a man of my word. Um, Micah, you and I did 156 episodes of RBP together before the great Grand X crash of 2019. And a lot has happened since then. So, uh, you know, what's been going on? What's been going on with you? Sure. Let me tell off before I uh, give this answer that uh -huh. I'm sure will go very viral uh -huh. on your social media. Yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. Just keep toweling. You're doing great. You're doing okay. great. The towel's getting damp already, if, if anybody just listening wants an update. It's getting damp. Indeed. Uh -huh. um, well, Ross, it's funny you ask. Uh, let me tell you a couple things. One, I've, I've never stopped doing content, uh, even though we don't do it together anymore until today. Uh, I still re record Backdoor Cover, which is a podcast you used to be a part of, as sports you were called. Sports Pod. Yes, a sports talk pod. about sports on Backdoor Cover. Uh, which Brad Key and I have hosted since 2018, I think. Keeping it alive, baby. We've kept it alive. The you know feed what's is funny? out there. If you go listen to episode one of the Ross Boland podcast, one of the first things I bring up is Backdoor Cover. So, ironically, I was thinking to myself, like, fuck, that kind of sucks. It's promo for a show that's not going to get done. And then y'all kept it alive, and here we are. So if you want to hear my piping hot sports takes, you can listen to that. Backdoor cover, three words. The Backdoor other podcast cover. I started um, as soon as my, upon my exit from Grand X was Mind of Micah. Mind of Micah. Which is a podcast about things I find interesting. Um, check it out if you're interested, in, including our most popular segment, the continuation of the long-running RBP bit, Micah's Read of the Week. Yeah. yeah. Which is also the name of my newsletter. Ah. which is Micah's Read of the Week and uh, available at micahweiner.substack.com. We're going to give out all the plugs right up front Oh, absolutely. Here. You need to. Shockingly, uh, next Monday's edition will be the 100th episode of Micah's Read of the Week. 100th oh, volume. of uh, It's a weekly newsletter that I publish every Monday around lunchtime. It's things I find interesting. That's basically it. Sometimes so, a column. Is it yeah, always... Some, sometimes there's some writing. There will probably be some reflection on episode 100 here, uh, coming up, our volume 100. And it's free, micahweiner.substack.com. Get uh, on there. Subscribe to the Micah Weiner Substack now. Okay, so there's the content piece. The The more important part, the my nine to five, if you will, is uh, I am a certified mortgage advisor now. I have uh, been working for a couple years, several years now, uh, in the mortgage industry. It's actually really rewarding for me. Um, I like helping people get into homes. I used to be a realtor in another life. I don't even know if you know this about me. 10 or 12 years ago? I don't think I did. Um, oh, wait, no. We, I think we talked about this briefly at one point. We might have, yeah. And so I still get the satisfaction of helping people get into a home. And, you know, as you know, Ross, according to the Federal Reserve, homeowners on average have more than 40 times the wealth as renters. So the fastest way to achieve wealth in America is through home ownership. Yeah, I'm actually like uh, a product of this fact. Um, not necessarily that I've, I have not achieved wealth, to be clear. I have not achieved wealth. But, but the, the fact is that by accident, <laughs> I, I, I married up a tax bracket. And then I got divorced. And when I got divorced, 
the home I owned that I had to buy my ex-wife out of actually appreciated more than I had to pay her within a calendar year. I can imagine. So I kind of hit the jackpot. Anyway, the point is, I recently found out that as a result of home ownership in Austin, Texas, which is quite, uh, quite uh, profitable if you were buying you know, any number of years ago, um, I have access to a lot, a lot of money. Like if I wanted to get a, another house, for example. And that's when it occurred to me, oh, this is what rich people do. Yes. And yes, exactly. And, and how you get the money out is you take the equity in your home and you do a refinance or a cash out refinance in this case. And the best way to do that is to go to MicahWeiner.com, M-I-C-A-H-W-I-E-N-E-R.com. Schedule a risk-free mortgage consultation. Uh, even if you're, if you're not a homeowner and you're looking to buy any time this year, I'd love to help you. We've got programs and help you uh, protect yourself against the rising interest rates right now. Um, I'm pretty much done with the plugs. MicahWeiner.com. Well, tw- check it tell out. us your Instagram and, and TikTok and... Sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll get, yeah, thank you. And, and one other thing, if anybody yeah, yeah, yeah. from the Ross Boland podcast, uh, if you, all you have to do is go to MicahWeiner.com, schedule a, 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 an appointment. It's a 15-minute phone call. Mention Ross sent you. Uh, if we work together and we close a deal, I'll throw you a thousand bucks at closing. Hey. How about that? What a guy. And if you want to follow along, at Micah Weiner on Twitter and Instagram, uh, verified on Twitter, thanks to Jared Borislow, um, at Producer Micah on Twitter, too. That's a long story. We've gotten into the, you know, if you're listening to this and you know who I am, you probably already heard that. And, still uh, alive. Still both accounts going. And my newest thing, Mortgage Micah on TikTok. This is my favorite thing. It's electric. My yeah. favorite thing that you do. And it's, it's, it's really, it's kind of funny, but it like occurred to me as we were discussing off mic before we started recording. I was like, you're such a pure content guy because it doesn't matter what field you went into after, you know, our, our former job, you were always going to do content in some form. And it's funny. There's only certain people who can pull off that level of like, bro, it's not easy to make a video about, you know, mortgages entertaining. <laughs> That's true. It's not. In, but you have that talent. You're just you're a naturally entertaining well, guy. And, and I, I miss say, that about you. I love you. Well, very thank much. you. I, I love you too, Ross. We, we worked together a very long time and, and had a lot of good times together. We did. Um, but you know, it, it's unlike me and my ex-wife. Oh, <laughs> uh, well, she's a nice lady too. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm wherever she it's is. a joke show. We make jokes. We're so. having fun. We're we having do. fun. It's here. comedy. Um, even though she lost out on all this equity that you're enjoying. I but that's, am, I'm crushing it. Thank you yeah, for that. Yeah. I, I'm sure she's doing fine. And uh, I wish nothing but the best for her. Nice, nice Sam. lady. And, hey, and, big Sam. and big really Sam. enjoyed me and your new wife. It, that's how crazy things have been since the last time I've been on this podcast. <laughs> you got married, too. You've been divorced and remarried. Yes. I have ma- been engaged uh, to my 900-day fiancé because we had a one-year COVID uh, delay. Okay. And finally got married as well. Um, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It's, from the whole RBP gang? Yeah. I think I announced real it when treat. you did. Um, in fact, I'm quite confident I did. But well, thank you. I like to give some, you know, generic life updates. I don't, you know... Yeah, we don't have to get don't too spray your it. personal information uh, no, everywhere it's, it's or anything okay. like that, but... Well, and, you know, that's... Uh, and and it, it really is sort of a labor of love, even though it can be daunting. What, marriage? Uh, no, no, the, the, the content <laughs> game. I'm I'm in total love with my wife, but <sighs> the content game it's not easy, and, and people don't realize that. And you know, I'm not I I am uh, you know my the my amount of content. Although I try and put out four or five six pieces a week, uh, it's still I'm not a, a content professional. Um, the well, fun- not full time, right? You're a professional, but it's more than I, to me. It the podcasting is sort of a creative outlet. Sure, even if nobody listened. Um, but I would encourage you to listen. You can subscribe to Backdoor Cover and Mind of Micah today <laughs> on iTunes or anywhere you listen to podcasts. But He's the best. God, I'm pouring sweat. It, it's. <laughs> I'll tell you one, one quick story. When I launched Mortgage Micah, the TikTok, um, <laughs> it's, it's where you do mortgage content on TikTok. Yeah, at Mortgage so Micah, give it a follow. There's also some stuff you can see. My new home. I I moved in a, to a home this week. It's uh, beautiful. I am now a homeowner. Big I, life changes. We're going to list a whole bunch of remarkable. Um, yeah, I'm a homeowner now. Um, but <laughs> so I put land. together this TikTok and I spent like an hour editing it in the proprietary TikTok video editing system. It's rough in there, man. And well, especially if you don't 
you know, if you're new to it, it's it's got a little bit of that early uh, Snapchat where it's intentionally difficult, so your yeah. parents can't figure it out. They're trying to limit it so that so the Zoomers can make all the content, and the rest of us olds can just die. That's right. And so, you know, I I have a background in in TV news and journalism, so eventually I figured it out. But anyway, I spent like an hour, and then I went to publish, and I went and talked to our intern who was a UT student. Okay. And I said, okay, what do I need to post to get this the maximum reach i would imagine the first post they they really they try and bump you up so you'll do more they give you a lot of engagement Exposure, sure yeah yeah uh and she was like oh tag it with this and this and for you and i was like i don't even know what these mean but sure great and we did and we published it and i was like i pressed send and i sent it out and i was like yes let's go i'm i'm on tiktok now <laughs> and then she goes okay so um when's your next post going out and i'm like oh, I, I don't know she's like Oh, because you really need to do three or four a day on TikTok God. to be rewarded by the algorithm. Yeah. And I just looked at her and I'm like, I, this is going to be, this is going to be a challenge. Dude, it's funny because even for like, so, you know, Oysters, Clams and Cockles, our TV and film podcast, uh, it's TikTok page is our least successful because it's the most sporadic show we do. So mm. it's very random when we have clips available to, to put out. And uh, it's just based on that alone. Now, whereas on RBP, we do an episode or two or three in some cases a week. It gives us a lot of material to spray out on TikTok where we've had a lot of success where Jared and Formula Bone F1 show, also available wherever you listen to RBP if you love F1, um, that, that what if has you don't crushed. Like, what if you don't like F1? Is I mean, there any value in Formula Bone? Because I see the clips of Jared, and I am, I'm always at least mildly uh, amused by Jay bone and his antics. I think you um, could still enjoy it if, you, if you're a Jared fan and you don't like F1. Um, but it is he all seems about... Real. He's in it. Yeah, dude. He's he, deep in the shit. Isn't, this isn't a 30,000-foot view. He is... He's on, on, uh, on ground floor. He's there. on the level, he's Micah. He's real in, in the scene. Yeah, and he gives you a lot of the, the like, because he was a new fan because of Drive to Survive, like a lot of F1 fans are, and then he just went balls deep. And he gives you a lot of the information and the basics about the different stuff about racing. Like, you know, when you learn a new sport, you don't know anything about it. So you have to learn all the, the rules and how things work, it's especially also with racing. It's funny coming from Jared because... You know, F1 is so European in nature. Yes. Uh, global. I know it's a global sport, but really its sensibilities are so European and words are pronounced in the European fashion. And to see Jared sit in a race car bed like a child. Yes. Saying Grand Prix and and the other things that he says. Yes. Uh, it's it's really good. It, I'm, I'm and nobody's better uh, at putting together and growing social media than J-Bone. Oh, he's, he's been he's killing a, He's it. a pro. He has 150,000 TikTok followers sitting in that race car bed. And yeah, I got to say, it almost feels like Jared's European pronunciation of F1 words is like the child of your um, authentic Mexican pronunciation of, of words like guacamole on, yes. on podcasts. Or tortillas. Or tortillas, yeah. Yes, yeah. I, you know, in retrospect, I, I don't know if I could get away with some of those bits in 2022. Yeah, I, I don't know if that would be I considered mean, cultural. Guacamole is, I mean, not. I say that with love, and that is the proper con, uh, pronunciation. Look, when I speak... I'm certainly not making fun of anyone, but I... When I speak Spanish, which happened recently as I was in uh, uh, Tulum, Mexico, otherwise known as Influencers it's a flex. Paradise. Yeah. It was a flex, but also that place is fucking weird, bro. Anyway, the point is I was speaking Spanish, and when I speak Spanish, I throw on an accent with it. Like, it's not... I don't sit there and full out, all the way gringo myself. Yeah, you don't want to say, como estas, Yeah, senor. exactly. I'm from yeah. Texas, man. And I was taught by Spanish-speaking people for the most part, except for that one white lady who I had in middle school who bitched about her Dodge Viper lease. Um, oh, but look yeah. at you now in a Polaris slingshot, a one-day lease. I know. I did it, Mom. Um, but anyway, so yeah. How's Debbie Bolin doing? Dude, she's, she's doing great, man. Man, shouts to Debbie. She always has been very supportive of me throughout my content journey. Micah, uh, post she's, RBP. she's the greatest content mom fan I'm aware of because she supports not just me, like to where every episode that drops, she listens to it immediately and, and then doesn't feel she has to talk to me in real life because she's gotten an update through the show. Mm. But it's good. Listens to everybody's shit from back at Grand X. Everybody's shit. She, can, I mean, she, she consumes su- it all. I, I she really support everybody. Um, shouts to Debbie. Nice, nice woman. And, um, uh, yeah. They're very nice. Shouts yeah. to Deb. You know, Will DeFreeze's mother likes all of my TikToks. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's uh, I love that. Damn, I haven't gotten that follow. Yeah, I don't sorry. Think. I need to work on that. I'm jealous. But 
Yeah. Okay. You well, want me to catch you up on what happened with me just briefly? If anybody sure. here just came back, perhaps. I know I pissed a lot of you off in 2020. Oh, everyone's been gone for since 167. Apologize for that. Oh, yeah. Um, well. but, but yeah, so uh, I got divorced. Uh, I weaned off antidepressants. I went completely insane, almost died, uh, but I survived. And now I am beginning to thrive. That's the too long didn't read of it. So now you're all caught this up on your, us. Your drive to survive. Yeah. So um, now, look, before either of us has goes in cardiac arrest i'm gonna i'm gonna push us to a segment because you're well, caught up on be, us before we do okay i i would be remiss if i would sit in your your garage in a slingshot and sure. not uh briefly address i've spent years thinking about what i would say if i was on the ross bowling yeah podcast. yeah yeah make, and, make some kind of statement yeah and and you know people ask you should get back with ross ross you should ross should gang up you know we should do you, content why don't you guys do a show yeah and i've done content with the wash media guys since post grand x i've done content with some with boosh and other affiliated people for sure uh, as well but never anything with ross and uh i would be lying to say if there weren't some slight hard feelings at the end right and i and but at the same time you and i saw each other a, a couple months later that's at true somebody's, at dave's house yeah dave's house at a halloween party i was wearing a uh, a wig uh, uh, yeah. What was that woman's name? I the, don't know why. The pill. I was the the pill lady. Oh, Theranos lady. Yeah, the Theranos Theranos lady. Elizabeth Holmes. Yes, I was yeah. Elizabeth Holmes. Uh, I just really wanted to wear a, a turtleneck sweatshirt or sweater. But you looked great. Anyway, we saw each other not that long after. We don't have any beef. I don't. I've never had any beef with Ross. Um, my my only beef. Re well, I had two beefs at the time. Uh, one was. I had a meeting with with the the former CEO of our company, where right. in which he laid me off, um, and or said the company's ending or whatever. It was it was the end, uh, and it was ride like, was over. Yeah, I had an eight a.m. meeting with him, and like before I got home, I was getting text that Ross on had released an RBP saying here's what's going on, and Micah isn't with Grand X anymore, and that's unfortunate. We're going to move forward. Right. And it really made me mad for a couple of reasons. One, I had to call my mom and tell her I just got laid off because I hadn't told anyone. I was right. literally on my way home. Um, and so that, that hurt for a little while. I'm over that now, clearly. But I wanted to share it. No, no, and I apologize. And, I mean, that's obviously not the way I would have. And I, I, I know you didn't do it go. in a spiteful manner. I was just like, "Fuck Ross! Why is he? Be, why is such an idiot? Why would he do that to me?" I mean, I like I didn't want to do the show and not explain right. where you were. Like, well, it didn't, and that was, it didn't feel right. And I think I can't remember the circumstances, but I'm pretty sure there was a reason I had to do an episode. I couldn't wait or something. Yeah, no, I'm some sure ad there was read or something. So I, I wish, in retrospect, yeah, it I, sucked. It I would have. One said, hey, can you hang on? Give me a, a couple hours or a couple days or whatever. Or yeah. two, you know, I would have liked when I started my new job not to have hundreds of thousands of people know that the way that, that it went down that I was laid off. Sure. So that was kind of it. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize. I mean, honestly, it was it and, was such a shitty of, position that that all of us well, were in. It wasn't your but, fault. And the no, end of Grand it was, X was, it was the crash was of, tough, of seven years of investment for me. So it wasn't I wasn't thinking very clearly, well, man. And I was I was about to go through a divorce, as you can yeah, uh, now see. It was a tough time. And, but anyway, and, so the point is, yes. And, and the only other thing I would if say I is could do it differently. I would have obviously said something to you. I would have obviously given you some warning or asked your permission or found a way to make it right for you. But at that point. I didn't know if the show was going to exist anymore, so I was just trying to do. I was just trying to get the fuck out yeah, because no, I, because I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea what and, I was doing. You know, emotions were high because I I've worked a lot of places, um, and no job before my job as a certified mortgage advisor have I ever enjoyed my day to day as much as I enjoyed it at Grand X. Yeah, it was I mean, great. Every, even though there were things going on around us that were uh, sinking the company, problematic. And uh, questionable, and there were poor. There were some poor oh, decisions made. That, there were sure. a lot of, of of poor business decisions. I'm not saying anything uh, in no, any other some, way. There were some poor personal every decisions day, made as well. Yeah, every day I enjoyed going in. It was fun. We like. I'll say this though: not I, everybody we created did. something. Not everybody did, and not everybody enjoyed going in every day. It did. It's one of the controversial things about it that that I'm not. I, I have yeah. to say. I well, have to and say I can it. just speak for myself. Yeah, I enjoyed, you enjoyed going. Uh, in every you know, day. and and I was doing something I liked and working with people I liked and friends and, and, uh, you know, in retrospect, as we all look back at it, like I should have gotten out a year earlier and had a backup plan and been ready to move on to something. 
And instead, I just sort of went down with the ship. We were there we towards all the end. We yeah. all did. I mean, well, I, at, literally, at end, yeah. I don't know very many people who walked away. And I think it's because of the reason you just spoke to, because a lot of people really did enjoy working there. And it was what made it so, so, I mean, for me, it was horrifying. The way it went down at the end was a massive, massive life shift for me, especially in conjunction with uh, going through the personal stuff and then having to, like start my own business, not really knowing what I was doing. It was, it was the worst few years stretch of my life bar, by far, not even close. There's nothing that challenges it. And for, I mean, for that reason, there will always be like, it's a bittersweet memory. You know what I mean? It also gave me the career I have now, the opportunities I have now, the show I have now, the ability to sit here and shoot the shit with you now as my, as my gig. So it's hard for me to bash it. But at the same time, I, lo I know, I know a lot of negative that came from it that, that obviously doesn't get talked about and I'm not going to be the one to do that, but it's, it's, there was bad too. So yeah, sure. I mean, but it, look, like you said, it's, it's one of those things where overall my memories of creating content with the people that I got to work with on a day to day, best time I've ever had working by far. And, and I don't know, think it'll ever be challenged. It, was, it just was. Even though I was hired to be a part of management, I never was. <laughs> so well, I was, uh, you know, I was also technically said, a part of management, well, you but I never more, was. You were much more a part of of the, I got the less in, fun parts of the job. I got to be in the room. Yeah, and that was never fun. So no, it wasn't. Anyway, I, I wanted to to address that. Yeah, and, and no, uh, there's obviously it. no hard feelings. Uh, I I worked with Ross. I mean, I don't know, three or four years. We, I never, I I never had any anything uh, bad to say about. Uh, Ross as a content producer, as a content creator. I, I mean, I, I've always, even in the times where you were going through things and it was maddening to me and not, nothing about working there made sense. Oh, God, yeah. Because there were times where that happened. Oh, so yeah. Um, Most of the time, I think. And, you know, at, at points you were my boss and I was like, I, d I don't know what's going on. At no point did I not realize, like, this guy is a really talented writer, a really talented person. And uh, it was always, you know, once... I, I never, never had a a, a, a critique of your work. Um, oh, thank you, man. And, and, and it means and a lot. You're it a talented does. guy, and I and nobody would be listening to this if they didn't know that and enjoy it. So, um, I well, think it's been a pleasure. We've to, covered it. It's been a pleasure to watch you continue to do content when you get the opportunity, because obviously, um, you know, I love your stuff. I mean, it was like the beauty of our relationship is that it was such an accident. Like I was gonna do. A, a podcast and Micah was the producer and then like the the first episode I was kind of like do you want we can like kick it back and forth a little bit you know you could say a thing here or there or whatever and then obviously over time it was like okay Micah's personality needs to shine here we need to give him more to well, do yeah and it, he was and, phenomenal so. and I always uh, appreciated that because um you know I I produced almost all the podcasts there at certain points well at, at certain points you did all of them at one point um you know, I, I gave away oysters, clams, and cockles to intern Luke. Shouts to him. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Shouts to intern <laughs> Luke sitting there and listening to us uh, yak about Game of Thrones for hours on end. Yeah, that's our guy. Um, but anyway, so I, I, um, but like on touching base at the time, I, I sat in the podcast and I had a microphone, but I basically played the stooge. They, they gave me shit all the time, fair and unfair. Um, <laughs> you know, if I threw a can of, of, of water away it became a bit that never died right um i grew a comedy mustache i sort of leaned into it sure sure and you and i just sat down we had adult conversations which is you know most and, of the time they yeah, were adult sometimes about childish things i did my best but mostly we sat there and talked like two adults about ridiculous things and non-ridiculous things sure sure and so allowing people to see that side of me um i'm thankful for it so, always makes me wonder and this is the last thing i'll say about well, it's not the last thing I'll say about the past, actually, because we're going to do a, a little segment here that involves the past. But it always makes me wonder if things had gone differently than they did. And if you and I had still been doing the show together during 2020, how much further I would have derailed into the political <laughs> abyss with your lib cuck ass sitting next to me. Yeah. Because that it's funny. You were always the dude that people gave shit to for that. And then after, t after 2020, I was fully in the Micah lib cuck boat, dude. They threw me in there with you. Yeah, we won't get into that. No, we don't have to, but but I'm just saying it. Always oh, I could have really, I could have destroyed your career. It, I I almost did by myself. So I feel like together we would have. Yeah, fully, we would have fully tanked my career. Well, you know, it was a there were strange <laughs> days. I, I think <laughs> they we were. You know, I mean, it, the other thing is, you and I sat next to each other, or we, we were working together 
when Trump, I remember the day that Trump came down the escalator yeah. and talked about sending the rapist and they send their, they don't send their best. They send the rapist, whatever. Yeah. And going like, Oh, this is some fucking weird shit. Yeah. We, we've never <laughs> seen anything like this. And, and we were there, you know, we were there every day when he fired his attorney, you know, and he fired people and did stuff and said shit. And, uh, it was, you know, I know there are people that, that believe in that man and believe in, in the things that he does. Um, but just from the, my, my view, in addition to where I stand politically was always like, this is weird. This is way outside of what we're used to right. way outside of the norms that we right. have. I don't think anybody at this point would fail to admit that it shifted the entire political spectrum. But like you said, we don't the have whole to, world. we don't have yeah. to do that yeah. today. So anyway, I, speaking of looking back at the, the good old days uh, and how strange the times were then, even if they're not stranger now, I wanted to do, uh, I wanted to look at the segments we did together during episode one, our first episode ever of RBP, which is still like, it's a real treat to like go back and throw on every once in a while for what me. Is, what is the date? Do you, do you know uh, It's that? 2019, January, I think of 2019. Okay. So it had come on, it was on Grand X Labs at first or whatever. And then uh, we did segments in the first episode. It was just Micah and I, and they were uh, as follows. Is it rude to recline your chair on an airplane? We did a lot of airplane bits, man. A lot of airplane comedy about standing up too soon Most on the airplane. Most bad stand-ups do that when they start out. Yeah, too, so. yeah. Well, might, and and not, I'm not calling you career. a bad stand-up, but... Well, that would be, a, that would be some kind of a compliment, yeah. as I've never done real stand-up. But, um, yeah, we did a lot of airplane bits, and uh, it's just funny to me that that kind of remained a theme for, like, 200 episodes. And then every once in a while still, because when COVID came about, it changed a lot of the airplane bits. Oh, I'm it changed sure. the people standing up right when the dinger goes off. It changed a lot of things. So anyway, I do think about it when I'm on a plane and one, when people stand up immediately, that, that was, I don't know what episode that was, but early on, man, you know, I remember I, I was a recliner. You're a non recliner, right? I and, was anti recliner. Uh, as anytime I sit down and the person in front of me pulls the, the recliner back, I'm like, did I have a, did I have something to do with influencing this person that this was okay? <laughs> Even though I'm reclined myself See, it was a beautiful bit for that reason it just made people think episode about it. one wow top 10 christmas movies of all time now i'm not sure why we did that in january but there wasn't a lot of rhyme or reason to a lot of the show and there still isn't sometimes <laughs> good point uh animal of the week i'm not sure what it was the probably a big cat of yeah some sort then we did the guy at the gas station playing multiple scratch off lotto tickets with a huge line behind him and and only one cashier which that bit lasted a long time too. I bitch about scratchers still to this day on occasion, depending on how recently one has accosted me. <laughs> um, also, we did stuff to Wikipedia when you're high, which I did not realize we did episode one. That's really funny to me. I remember that. I, I, I'll give you my recollection uh, because basically you came in and you're like, hey, I've written some stuff. I want to do a podcast. And I'm like, Okay, <laughs> which was basically how Touching Base started too. Like, sure, yeah. they were like, "Hey, let's. Uh, we're about to go on this EDM cruise. Let's talk about it." Right. I'm like, okay, and I was like, "All right, fine." So we do the first few segments. We've got a little rapport. I'm like, "This is kind of fun. This is interesting." And then you were like, "All right, it's time for things to Wikipedia while you're high." And I'm like, "Oh God, <laughs> here it comes." There's this. I, I am doing the Ross. Here's Baldwin the Ross podcast. shit that I knew was coming. Yeah, the first one ever was the Russian sleep experiment. Which, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember which that. Which still gives me nightmares on occasion. We also did a Houston rap song of the week, uh, Shoes That Are Dope That I Want, which I think we only did like two more times. And then this one we did a whole bunch and definitely isn't allowed anymore. Classic rap albums that people like my friend Dylan, who's Native American, have probably never heard. And uh, eventually I stopped doing that segment when I realized it was not only offensive, but just unnecessarily racial. So anyway, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and shout out to Dylan, by the way, who Micah and I got to enjoy some time together at his, his, his wedding. You were wearing recently. the same jacket. I was, that. I think I was wearing it's, this it's tremendous. exact jacket. Very Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Yes. The Indochino jacket. Um, well, shout to Indochino. For sure. So yeah, that was the first ever episode, um, that we ever did. And, and Micah, if you'll, if you'll, Honor us. I've got one more one more segment I want you to hit real sure. quick. Sure. And okay. actually, before we get to that, okay. I have a segment I'd like to. Oh, yeah. This is unannounced, and I just thought about it as you were going through this. Let's do it. Uh, the segment is called Every Three-Man Moving Team Has One Mover That Sucks. Okay. You think there's one guy that's always being carried by the other two? Yes. I moved this <laughs> last weekend. And I, you know, basically, I keep thinking about this while I'm in the shower. This is like a three minute stand up bit, but I don't really have an outlet except for right here. This so is it. here please, it is. Please unleash. And I think you'll enjoy this. Uh, it doesn't matter who you hire, 
if you hire college honks, if you hire a random guy named Robert, which I have for the last several moves, um, just to Robert, Robert's a great guy. Robert is strong as a fucking ox. I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. Uh, he, he's, he's incredible and he's a very nice man. So if anybody wants uh, a mover in Austin, holler at me at Michael Weiner, I'll hook you up with Robert. All right. Anyway, Robert is great. One of Robert's other movers, great guy, killed it. Robert's third mover <laughs> fucking sucked. Like he, he used my bathroom in my apartment as we were moving stuff from the apartment to the house. Like once I saw him coming out of there and he had like a weird look on his face, like he didn't ask permission. And I'm like, you know what? I don't care. It doesn't bother me. And then like 10 minutes later, he's like, can I use your bathroom? I'm like, yeah. That's but also you already did. You already did, but that's fine. And then we get to the new house. Uh, <laughs> and then like, you know, Robert is putting like entire dressers on his back and walking out with him and, and not scratching anything. It's incredible. The precision. This guy takes my wife's uh, jewelry box. It's, sure, sure. You know, her big stand up jewelry piece that she has. These things are pain in the, the ass to move. Yeah. And they've got valuables in them. And and he doesn't wrap it. He just puts it on a on a, a dolly and starts walking. I'm like, hey, man, can you can you wrap things like, no, no, I got it. And he gets a few steps out, and then Robert walks up behind and is like, you need to wrap that right now, because I don't need jewels all over the place. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's kind of strike two, but whatever. <laughs> then we get to the house, and the guy is like, Robert is, is carrying, you know, the heaviest shit I've ever seen. And the other guy. The whole couch. Just, yeah. yeah, carrying the entire couch by themselves. This guy is holding, I shit you not, just two pillows, just walking in with two cushions. And I was like, you are, you stink, dude. This is bad. But she, and then, of course, everybody should be coming through my garage. He walks straight through the front door uh -huh. and puts a scratch right on the wall oh, with the bed frame. Good. And it's like, oh, sorry. And I'm like, all it, right, man. It makes sense, though, you strategically, because it's like, you know, with the cops, when they have when they make partnerships, like there's usually a more experienced cop and then a younger cop who's like going to pick up game. And I'm assuming when they're at the moving, you know, headquarters and everybody's together and they're like, all right. We're putting together teams for today. I need they, an A, B, and a C yeah, player. It's they like need, a scramble. They need it to be sort of evenly spread out so that there's not one team that's stuck with all the shit movers and then the things don't get moved because those guys can only take two pillows at a time. Right. So so I, I that is my belief that it doesn't really matter. You know, there's going to be one guy that's going to use your bathroom and ask you for water and be lazier than the others. Maybe it's like an NBA situation where there's a salary cap and they only have so much they can Could use be. on each mover. And sometimes you just got to cheap out and get yourself like a fucking... D level guy, you know? Well, it could also be like the NBA where the guy who is carrying the guy uh, hates him and brings him guns. Or true. Something. That's anyway, true. Anyway, I, I just wanted to share that. Like shouts, on the Wizards. Yeah. Shouts to Robert. Robert is great. And uh, <laughs> that third guy who mumbles when he talks and brings in pillows, you just suck. You, you need to find another career, my friend. Today's episode is brought to you by Talkspace. There's something rejuvenating about getting down to what's essential and starting fresh. Same goes with your mind. Over the years, thoughts and emotions can build up. That's why it's important to talk to someone who's trained to help you declutter your mental space. Talkspace therapists are available to message anytime you need because you shouldn't have to watch your thoughts pile up until your next appointment rolls around. I've been in therapy for over a decade. Can't more highly recommend it, but I understand it can be daunting. Getting started is way less daunting with Talkspace. They make connecting with a therapist easy. So you can stop setting aside your own mental well-being. Talkspace takes some of the pressure off that first step. It's a more flexible and convenient way to get high-quality care. Plus, there are several payment options to choose from once you match with one of their licensed therapists. You can message them anytime through the app or schedule a live session if you need to talk through something with someone face-to-face. -face. Uh, your mental health is too important to rely on Google. With 24-7 text, audio, and video messaging, Talkspace lets you talk to a licensed therapist without needing an appointment. They have thousands of therapists across dozens of specialties. Just go match with one today. It's private, secure, most importantly, accessible. Everything you love about therapy without the stuff that gets in the way. So if you've got thoughts and emotions piling up, a fresh perspective can help you feel better. Match with your dedicated therapist today at Talkspace.com and use promo code RBP during sign up to get $100 off your first month. That's $100 off Talkspace.com. Promo code RBP. RBP. There Micah, nice. it has been a long time, but I know the people need it. They need to hear you reading rap lyrics. Do you think you still have what it takes? Sure, yeah. I've selected off the new Drake album, Jimmy Cooks, but you're going to do the, the 21 Savage verse from Drake's Jimmy Cooks here. I've got the, okay. I've got the lyrics. I'll be honest, up. I have not yet listened to any of the new Drake album, uh, so I don't know anything about this well, song. Well, this is the only song that could be considered a rap song, really. Um, 
and it, it'll 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 do itself justice. You just read the parts that aren't in parentheses, okay? okay? And if if you can hold it just just this way, so <laughs> oh, so I can you're see, gonna I'll do that. the parentheses. Okay, okay, gotcha. All right. Okay, and you can start whenever you're ready. This is Micah Weiner performing Twenty One Savages verse off of Drake's song Jimmy Cooks from Well Never Mind or whatever. Yeah, the fuck hang on, let me get uh, tell off. Yeah, because tell I'm, off. This here, is man. gonna go viral, I'm sure. Tell off. You got to get the the dome as not the shiny people have as been possible. Waiting. There you go. I was due a haircut today. I know, uh, and you and got so I I, got lo- I I just look terrible. Okay, no, I think you look great, man. Thank you. you. Really, do. I appreciate that. All right. Spin a block twice, like it ain't nowhere to park. Twenty-one. Smack the backside of his head like he barked. Pussy. OVO four L. We come out when it get dark. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Big stepper. He came in a rolls, but he left in a stretcher. Twenty-one. Let my brother drive while I shoot. Team effort. 21. Asking all these questions, bitch. You must think you Nadeska. The chopper like to feel on all the ops. It's a molester. 21. I'm sorry. The, there are people walking by <laughs> that just see two grown men sitting, <laughs> sitting in a slingshot in, in your driveway. That's the first person that's walked by, and he looked very confused. A dude drove by on a bicycle. He looked confused, too. As great. I'm saying, very bizarre uh, rappler. Right, well, back, not, back, back to the song. Oh, let's see. Let yeah, me continue. Yeah. Molester line was great. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. I be with my gun like Rosé be with lemon pepper. She want to hear some Afro beats. Because she just popped a Tesla. All that working out, that player must think he's a wrestler. But it ain't the UFC. This chopper came with a compressor. 21. This chopper came with a compressor. Pussy. This Glock 45 came with a switch. Pussy. Uh, You were supposed to say 21 there. 21, I'm sorry. If I was Will Smith, I would have slapped him with a stick. Put your hands in the air. It's a stick up. 21. Spin the same hood where I get my dick sucked. Facts. If you standing on business, put your blick up. 21, 21. I don't know what that means. Come around acting scary. Get your shit took. 21. Fell in love, feeling dizzy, so I spizzin. 21. Okay, thank you. I got mad love for the boy, yeah. That's my twizzin. 21. If them players keep on dissing, slide a gissin. 21. We the reason the ops ain't got no frizzins. 21. Last dude played with me got turned duppy. I ain't even roll him in the wood because he musty. <laughs> <laughs> you ask how she doing? I tell her, come fuck me. Shot his ass 20 times. Damn, this player lucky. Damn, that player lucky. That's enough. Good God. All right. Oh, Micah, thank you for that. I hope the servers for this podcast aren't sitting in this in this garage because someone needs to ice them down. We're yeah. set to go viral. That That's, that's going to go viral. I appreciate that. That was beautiful. Thank you for that art. Perform- I'd say that, that was live art. Like a live art performance, performance art. Is yeah, that what we, it's called. It re- requires some snaps, like we're at a poetry slam. It was beautiful. Yeah, snaps, snaps for Micah. If you're riding in your car right now, thanks to Twenty One Savage for the inspiration. Great lyrics from Twenty One. He's just a poet. Everybody 21, knows 21, that. Twenty One, Twenty One, beautiful 21. guy rules. Micah, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks uh, for having me, Ross. I'm going to get us out of here before we. Bef- seriously, it's not even a bit anymore. I think I think I might be close yeah, to passing. Yeah, I was going to say if this is just an elaborate. Uh, if this is just a, an elaborate a way to get revenge on me, uh, because you've harbored animosity for several years, uh, and I'm trying you want to kill me you, to die of of um, <laughs> cardiac arrest, cardiac arrest, and just general heat exhaustion. You got me. Uh, mission accomplished, <laughs> was, my friend. But and no, I wanted it on you. camera, man. Thank and you I, very much. This has been fun. I wanted the neighbors to see it too, which is why I've got <laughs> witnesses. So I want to make sure I go away for a long time because of this. That was the goal. So thank you for helping me accomplish that. You are the man. Um, follow at Mortgage Mike on TikTok. Go listen to Backdoor Cover. Go listen to Mind of Micah. Subscribe to the Substack. That's right. At Micah Weiner on Instagram and Twitter and at Producer Micah on Twitter as well. Let's go. Everything's in the link in bio, at Micah Weiner. Let's go. We did it. Episode 500, the reunion. It was beautiful. It was dramatic. It was heartwarming. And in the end, it was art. Mm, Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
Today's episode is also brought to you by Me Undies. Some days you just get your ass kicked out there, and there's no better refrain from the beatings life throws your ass's way than to make sure your ass is covered by only the finest undies available to woman or man. Me Undies is here to help you take a break from the hardships of the world and give yourself a soft summer when you're cocooned in the softest and most breathable undies, loungewear, and swimwear known to humanity. All your other problems will simply melt away. I've been wearing Me Undies for like five years now, okay, since back when they first started sponsoring the show years ago. Uh, they went away now they're back i'm wearing a brand new pair right now nothing like them super excited to have them back on board as a sponsor because of the comfort of these undies it's unmatched the loungewear the swimwear all phenomenal it's the best the rbp gang deserves to have the finest things in life like the comfort of me undies and let's face it summer is sweaty but your butt doesn't have to be with me undies light and breathable micro modal fabric you can stay comfy and cool all summer long they have super fun seasonal prints tons of styles to choose from in sizes xl to 4xl uh xs to 4xl by the way um so you can go to the beach uh without ever having to leave your living room. If you do dare to brave the heat and venture to the pool or the beach, check out their new and improved swimwear styles. They're soft, stretchy, and sustainably made. I just went to the beach in Mexico, and guess what? I took some of the uh, MeUndies swimwear with me for maximum comfort. It was incredible. Make it a soft summer with MeUndies. They have a great offer for the RBP gang. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off. If you sign up for their free-to-join membership, you can apply that 15% off to their already discounted membership prices. To get 15% off your first order and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash RBP. That's MeUndies.com slash RBP. And I'm glad my, I had my MeUndies on today because, man, it was hot as shit in there. No lie. I am back in the studio now. We were sweating bullets, Micah and I. Uh, I thought Micah might die. The video should be absolutely hilarious. Make sure you watch it in full on YouTube. Uh, I'm super thankful to Micah Weiner, again, for being here today. Over 300 and 40 episodes later, it was incredible making content with him again. And that's a moment I didn't know if we'd ever get. And for some time now, I have hoped for. And we did it. We got it. We recorded episode 500 in a fucking slingshot together. Maybe we'll do it again. Who's to say? I know I can confidently say right now is the happiest I have been in a very long time. Maybe ever. If you've been listening to this show since episode one, you've heard me go through a lot. If you shit, if you've been on Patreon dot com slash Ross Boland podcast and listen to the mental health minisodes. You've heard me cry on the air multiple times. And technically, because of all the episodes on Patreon, we've got way more than 500 episodes. So if you're all caught up and want more, patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast is where every Friday we drop an ad free exclusive episode exclusively for our supporters there, pledging a minimum of $5 a monthly to support the show, to support Boland Media. Get on Patreon today, uh, patreon.com slash Ross Boland podcast. But my life has completely fallen apart and been rebuilt entirely over these 500 episodes. I am an almost completely different person than I was when we did episode one. And while so much has changed, the show, through all its ups and downs and when it got too political and maybe even at times too personal, the show has been a constant in my life through it all. But... RBP is also not the only show we do, you know. We've got a lot going on here at Bolin Media, the back half of 2022, an absurd amount, really. Freeze All Motor Functions is back. Jared Borslow, Serena, and me talking Westworld. HBO's Westworld uh, season four premiere, I believe, is this Sunday on HBO. Um, the Formula Bone F1 show, hosted by Jared Borslow, available now. Latest episode is the 2022 Canadian Grand Prix recap. Go listen. Formula Bone F1 show, wherever you listen to RBP, it's available uh, at Formula Bone on TikTok. They got 150,000 followers. Jared does already on Formula Bone. At Formula Bone on Instagram and Twitter as well. Jared is at a wedding, but will be back next week here with me on RBP and with more Formula Bone. I miss Jared today. Uh, he's been an enormous part of this show's last, oh God, however many episodes, and also really a huge part of why Bolin Media has survived the pandemic long enough to make it into the recession. Super thankful for Jared. Love him like a brother, would do anything for that dude. Jared, you were missed today. Um, the first Game of Thrones spinoff, House of the Dragon, is premiering late in August. We will be covering every episode on oysters, clams, and cockles, our TV and film podcast here at Bolin Media. It was once the number one Game of Thrones podcast in the world, and Barrett Dudley and I, my co-host on Oysters, Clams, and Cockles, one of my best friends of over 20 years, Barrett Dudley, uh, just like we did with Game of Thrones, 
We're going to cover House of the Dragon, so join us on Oysters, Clams, and Cockles. Subscribe, follow, hit the TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, etc. I have a Houston sports podcast called Banging the Can. All these shows are made here in-house at Bowling Media Headquarters in South Austin, Texas, in what is our content house. Um, It's awesome. I love the setup. I'm thankful to come into it every day. We appreciate every one of you who listens to a Bowling Media show or tells people about our content. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for engaging with us on social media. That helps us grow the show. We appreciate every like, every comment, as well as rating and review for the podcast on the podcast apps. Give us a five-star rating on Spotify. If you're listening on Spotify, give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts and write a review if you haven't. All that stuff helps us grow. Shout out to Content Cade, Cade Oris, employee number three here at Bolin Media who produced this entire episode by himself, the slingshot shit, all of it, alone. Cade has been a phenomenal addition to Bowen Media and a great employee, great kid. Shout out to my wife for selling all our ads. Bowen Media is for real a family business. These people are my family to me, Jared and Cade. Uh, but if you didn't know, my wife, she's amazing, has done a great job with all our sponsors. She's been selling all our ads here in-house at Bowen Media, has been for the last several months. Grab some new sponsors, really blown us away. Uh, we're very thankful for, here, for her here at Bowen Media, and I'm thankful for her all the time, obviously, personally, um, even more so at home. Go to bolinmedia.com slash shop. That's B-O-L-E-N media.com slash shop to support our show by buying some merch. We've got RBP merch. We've got Year of the Dog with Bruce and Bella on there, my two uh, toy Australian shepherds. They're nine years old. They're brother and sister. They're amazing. Huge part of my life. Um, we've got the, the Bone Zone t-shirts. We've got mouse pads. We've got coffee cups. We're going to have the finishing cup up soon. I promise you, Patreon people, I promise you. Um, if you don't know that joke, it's from Patreon. Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, all the merch available on bowlandmedia.com slash shop. Support us there. Appreciate y'all for representing around your hometown or, uh, at the gym or, or at the office or wherever you live. I guess it doesn't have to be your hometown. Follow us on TikTok at the Ross Boland podcast. Trying to go for hundred K. We're almost at a hundred thousand followers. Appreciate it. Uh, at the Ross Boland podcast on Instagram as well at Ross Boland pod on Twitter. I am Ross Boland. You can follow me at W-R-B-O-L-E-N on Twitter and Instagram. Those are my personal accounts. I tweet a lot. Love Twitter. Big Twitter guy. Have been for many, many years, over a decade. I'll never stop. I don't give a fuck who owns it. You'll never stop me from tweeting. I'll be back Friday with another ad-free exclusive show available only to those who support us on Patreon.com slash Ross Bolin Podcast, just like every Friday. Did I say slosh? I meant slash. Ross Boland podcast, but thank you for being here today. Episode 500. We made it 500 episodes. We did it until next time. Peace be with you and also with you.